Oh, I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for accepting. This is a, a real, well, I could say it's like a present for me. I really admire you so much. And well, mm, having you here is it's like, I don't know, something really, really special for us. And um, I congratulate you, first of all, for all your work, for your books, for all your online stuff, for everything. I read this book last year, and I have to say it was really wonderful. And there were some things that really, really helped us, even in our relationship. And uh, well, today we're going to talk about parenting. So something that, well, your community, I suppose there are loads of uh, families and mothers in our community as well. And today I would like to talk about what makes it so difficult to parent nowadays. So Shefali, may I ask you a personal question? Sure. Okay. So what was one of the most difficult issues, things, that you had parenting your daughter at the beginning? Well, what I found difficult was really the inspiration to teach other people. So what I found difficult was I had such a fantasy about how my child would be and what her temperament would be, her nature. And um, her nature was so different that I, I really had a culture shock because I couldn't recognize, I had so imagined her to be a carbon copy of what I wanted, that when she was in that, it was a huge shock. And that's what I realized that, oh, I, I was having a child, not for her, I was having a child for my fantasy. And once I figured that out, I began to ask myself, well, if I'm doing that, maybe everyone is doing that. And, and that's what actually began the work. Wow, that's great, that's great. I'm a mother of three. There are three adolescents and I had quite a difficult childhood. And when I became a mother, I thought that I had solved many problems and I realized that when my children were there, that many things were not solved yet. So I would like to ask you as well, um, how do you think or how important or what weight does it have our past? So um, do you think our past usually gets in the way of our parenting? Yes, you, you can't help it because our past shapes us. So whether we like it or not, it's having a huge impact. And if we've had emotional trauma, then we are unhealed. We're not coming from security or a sense of wholeness. So unless we heal that part in us, then that part is going to squeeze out in all sorts of ways and have an impact on us and our children. And we don't even realize that it is having an impact. And the greatest gift I always say that we can give our children is for us to go to therapy and heal our emotional baggage because otherwise we will dump it on our children and they won't understand why. You know, so if you were raised, for example, with very strict parents who controlled you, maybe you think that's the way to control them. And that's not a healthy way, but because you haven't healed your own stuff, it's going to come onto your children. So the best gift you can give your children is not expensive gifts, is not trips around the moon, it's not uh, fancy, you know, anything to do with anything fancy or expensive. It's your healing because your healing will regulate yourself and every child deserves and wants a regulated parent who can see them for who it is they are rather than who the parent wants them to be. Yeah, that's it really. And uh, going back when you said, no, they don't need presents or 
trips or so what they need is something so cheap and so you know simple just being there present with them and i remember when my first daughter now she's 18 my eldest was a baby it was like even painful for me just to be there so i wanted to be there and I really was there, but sometimes I just wasn't comfortable. I, I had this feeling of, oh, I need to go. I, I, I need to go cooking or I need to go and have a shower. No, it was like suffocating me. So um, what would you tell a mother having that sensation? Because sometimes you think the kind of mother you want to be, but that has nothing to do with the kind of mother a baby needs us to be. So what they need and what I want to give sometimes, you know, doesn't match. So what would you tell a mother that is really, really willing to be nice and calm and present, but can't? Yeah, it's really hard because when we mother, we get to see for the first time our own level of comfort with intimacy. And with adults with our male partners or if you have a female partner it doesn't matter we can we can manipulate the situation blame them create a fight uh, create a distraction so we can avoid intimacy but with an infant or a child where they are clearly not in control it's us who's in control we get to see the limits of our intimacy so what you were saying is that you were having a hard time being intimate because she was wanting you and you felt suffocated because you wanted to run away you know and and have space a lot of space but children don't need a lot of space at least in their early years they need us to be very close and for mothers who've had intimacy issues from their childhood uh, where they have felt uh, suffocated or engulfed or controlled they can feel like their children are manipulating them or controlling them, but the children are not doing that. Children are just children. They're scared, they're, they're clingy, because that's normal, but we can interpret that as, oh, you're trying to control me? Oh, you're trying to own me? Because we haven't resolved our issues around intimacy. But you also see mothers with the opposite, who are enmeshed with their children. And they cannot separate because they want to be clung to. They want the children to be dependent on them. And those are dangerous mothers too. Uh, because they, they don't allow the child to grow and to breathe and to be free. Uh, they want to be the center of the attention uh, because they have abandonment issues from their childhood. So, you know, it's, it's very complicated. And uh, yes, somebody wrote that giving your presence is, is simple, but it, is, it comes at a big price of our willingness to heal. Um, what children want is really simple. They just want a healed parent, but the healed parent is so hard to find. <laughs> That's it. And once we are conscious about it, that would be maybe the first step to realize that the problem is not, so the child doesn't have actually a problem. Many, many children have just one problem, that they're surrounded by adults that don't understand them or surrounded by adults that are hurt from their own childhoods or that, that they, they're not, they haven't resolved all their problems. That's the real problem children have. Maybe all the other problems is just our way of looking at them. So how could we help our children? So how can, what could we do to make things easier for our children once we've realized, okay, it's not him, it's me. So what can I do now? I don't want to shout. I don't want to punish. I don't want to give rewards. Okay, I know what I don't want to do, but where could they start? So I've written five books and yeah. four of them are parenting books. And my latest book, I don't know whether you've read it. It's called The Parenting Map. Yes. And I give, I give 20 steps to help parents do exactly what you're saying. Now what? 
So I've given the step-by-step, -step. it's called The Parenting Map. I think it's coming out in Spanish very soon. Oh, good. And uh, I've, I've helped parents really uh, take the steps. There's an, there is a change that needs to happen in your belief systems. There is a change that needs to happen in your emotional health. And then there's a change that happens in the connection with the child. There are three levels of change. The first has to be a mental. Yes. You have to learn what the, what the philosophy is that you have believed in that is a lie. I talk about the lies of parenting, that if you stay stuck in the lies, you're going to act in the lies. And then I talk about, then you have to heal yourself by recognizing your patterns. Uh, and I talk about the different patterns people have. I talk about five patterns. You could be a fighter parent, you could be a fixer parent, you could be a feigner, a freezer, a fleer. So I describe that in the book. And then I give actual tools. How do you empathize? How do you create boundaries? How do you negotiate? How do you say yes? How do you say no? I give a whole map for people to follow. But again, what you said is the key because the first step is the hardest is the willingness to acknowledge that it's you and then become really humble and start from ground zero. Okay, I know nothing. I'm going to start from ground zero and I'm willing to learn from my child. That requires the parent to be very humble and look at the child as the teacher. Yes. And, and begin to follow the child. Not that you don't guide the child, not that you you know you're having alcohol with the child that's not what i'm saying uh but i'm talking about really attuning to your child listening to what kind of child you have not the child you wanted to have yes and then you go from there thank you yeah parenting is one of the things or maybe i would say the most important thing i've ever done in my life and what's made me become a better person. Because wanting to listen to my children, to um, be the mother or try to become the mother they needed, um, helped me become a better professional, a better wife, a better friend. Because if you do it for them, uh, then you realize, wow, it wouldn't be very logical to be respectful and to listen to them and then be nasty to my husband or to my friend or to my colleague. Huh? So I think this consciousness sometimes awakens when we become parents because we don't want to hurt our children. And maybe before we had all these issues and these problems, but well, you know, we have maybe food issues or we have issues with sex or issues with our partners. Why do you think when a person becomes a mother or a father, that's like um, a big sign, you know, like a big red light in order to say, well, I need to work on myself. That's it. I need to do something. Well, you know, because in every other relationship, you can fool yourself. Yes that it's the other person's fault. But with our children, we can't really fool ourselves because a two-year-old cannot be causing so much harm, no. right? We cannot no. pretend like a two-year-old has so much power over us. So at that time, we have to, if we're willing to say, mm, maybe it's me. I'm screaming like a crazy person at this two-year-old. Obviously, it's not the two-year-old, it's me. I have no control. And that is an invitation to go deeper. I started this journey because I was screaming like a lunatic to my three-year-old and I realized something is wrong with this picture. My three-year-old cannot be so evil. No. Something is wrong with my head. And I began to do, do the work, like what is wrong with me? And yes. I didn't expect to be a crazy mother, but I had stuff that I had not looked at. I had, I had not healed. And I took that as an invitation to heal myself and then help others heal. But many parents are so blind and so stubborn uh, and so arrogant to, to not think it's them. And uh, that's the tragedy, you know? Yes, that's the tragedy, an ecologic tragedy. 
But there are, I think as well, of course, many parents like that you've mentioned, but others, I think they're so afraid to relive, rethink, re, you know, it's like that childhood, that adolescence was so painful. Maybe accepting that they didn't receive what they needed. Maybe accepting that they weren't loved as they deserved. Maybe accepting that their childhood wasn't as beautiful as mom and dad always say. That sometimes hurts too much. So what, what can these kind of people that, they're not that arrogant, but it's not that blindness. It's just that they're so afraid to face it. Yes, so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yes, I sometimes forget that parents are actually just afraid. Yes, but they have covered up their fear in this arrogance, right? That is the mask they're wearing. And that is the mask of the world. The global mask is one that says, I'm better than you. I don't need to change. I don't need to heal. And of course, underneath the, that mask is a desperate fear to confront the rejection, the pain, the abandonment of childhood. And in fact, the more the mask, the greater the fear, the greater oh, yes. the rejection, right? When, when you're healed, you don't need to wear a mask. You can be more and more authentic. You can say, hey, I'm messed up. Hey, I'm totally screwed up because you don't need to have a mask. You don't live in fear of rejection. You can come clean and be authentic and be vulnerable because you're not afraid of rejection anymore. So parents are very scared to go back. But if we don't go back, um, the pain will continue through generations. And we owe it to our children. And I really, this is my personal philosophy, that children come to us as those healers to, to tell us to go back and do our work. And sadly, yes. we miss them the entire message. And instead we focus on them. The finger is always on the, on the child and we need to turn the finger in. And that's what all my work is about. It's about how, yes. how, am, I, how am I showing up? What am I doing? How can I be different? And uh, once you do that, it is liberating because you can liberate your child to be themselves. Else. And that is what every child deserves. That's what we deserved as children. And we did not get it. Um, and they, our children are just longing to be seen for who it is they are. That's it. And well, thanks to Dr. Shefali. And well, what she does, I do, and many other authors. Now I'm, I'm also um, reading and investigating a lot of the work of Gabor Mate. I know you know him. He's going to be in our master as well. And um, you are coming in March. So my students are really happy to have you with us. So thanks um, to people like you, like, like me and like many others. Thanks even to our sad, painful um, childhoods. We become the persons we, we are today. And an invitation is that I think that in just one generation, it's possible to change and make a better world, just loving more and better all the children that we have in our lives, not only our children, but any child that appears in your life. So let's all as try and let them just become the wonderful person they have come to be and not want to change them. So, Shefali, I know um, you are very busy. I know you are in India. I really appreciate these 20, 25 minutes you've been with us. Um, I hope one day I can hug you and see you in person. And well, wishing to see you on the 18th of March with our students. So thank Wonderful. you so much for being here. Thank you, everyone. One, and you can grab a copy of my book, The Parenting Map. Uh, it's coming out in Spanish very soon. But thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. So bye-bye, Shefali. Bye -bye. I'm going to stay maybe five more minutes if they want to. Thank you. Okay. Thank bye, Shefali. Me quedo cinco minutitos más, si queréis.
Thank you so much. ¿Qué tal, bonitas? ¿Qué os ha parecido tener aquí a Shefali? Wow, me ha encantado poder hablar con ella este ratito. Um, ya me comentó que tenía 20, 25 minutitos, no más. Algunas de vosotras ya me habéis dicho, ay, es que yo no sé inglés. Bueno, pues nada, intentaremos subirlo al canal de YouTube y ahí podréis poner los subtítulos y escucharla. Pues nada, antes de irme, nada, una palabrita. ¿Qué, qué os ha parecido este ratito que hemos estado las dos compartiendo? Una palabrita, un aprendizaje que te llevas de este, de este ratito. Un abracito. ¿Qué os lleváis? ¿Qué os lleváis? Mm, mm, mm. Son lo máximo, total inspiración, sabiduría, completamente de acuerdo. ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? Gracias, Ivón. Ay, gracias a ti. Ay... Aquí muchas alumnas del máster, maravilloso, potente, gracias por traerla siempre, mucha claridad, inspiradora. Bueno, pues nada, yo encantadísima de haberla tenido aquí en directo, es un honor, es un privilegio y, y aún más lo será el 18 de marzo, que la vamos a tener, bueno, igual hora y media o dos o más en el máster con todas las alumnas. Pues nada, gracias, gracias, gracias por estar aquí. Os mando un abrazo. Y chao, chao, hasta la próxima.